Hi everybody and welcome in to our news on this Tuesday, June the 19th. More bad news for the county commissioners at last night's meeting. Gas prices are still coming down and community prayer meeting is tonight. These stories and more coming up on your news right here at 5.30. Just when county commissioners thought the upcoming budget could give them no more headaches, Finance Director Jeff Marlowe was forced to give them another dose of bad news at last night's meeting. Marlowe brought an additional budget amendment to the commission, pulling $100,000 from the county's fund balance to pay for the increased cost of providing health care for prisoners in the county jail. The county has a contract with Correctional Health Corporation to cover hospitalization and other medical costs of inmates, but that contract has a $50,000 cap. Anything over $50,000 must be paid entirely from county funds. We have never been below the cap Marlowe told commissioners the first contract we had included no cap and cost the provider a hundred thousand dollars in the first year. A second provider was found that required no cap and they went out of business in three months. Hospitalization, dental, and other medical costs for inmates now amount to nearly $500,000 a year and the county share continues to grow with little help from the state government, Marlowe pointed out. In 1994, the General Assembly passed a budget that provided $64 for each state board inmate. That rate was then cut to $35. This year, it will cost $1 million to house state prisoners, but we'll receive only half our real expenditures, Marlowe continued. The state pays nothing for prisoners held in jail awaiting trial, he added. The county is losing $1 million by housing state prisoners. If we think another $100,000 is bad now, what will it be like when the new jail is finished? Thomas Hatmaker asked. We now house 225 inmates. If the new jail becomes filled to its capacity of 400 inmates with a proportional number of state prisoners, Marlowe replied without finishing the conclusion. The commission, however, found itself between a jail and a hard place and had no choice but to approve the additional $100,000 expenditure. Hatmaker cast the loan against the motion to accept the contract renewal. Another vote by the commission was far from unanimous. A proposal from Mayor William Baird to rent office space from Community Trust Bank for the business incubator program nearly failed to pass despite the fact that the money for a matching federal grant has already been appropriated. Admaker argued during a building and grounds committee meeting that the county should look into using an existing county-owned building instead of renting space. His motion failed three to two, but he brought up the same objections in the regular meeting with more success. David Atkins amended the lease motion to enable the county to void the lease if the incubator program fails to be refunded or for some other reason is ended rather than paying $2,700 a month for empty office space. The vote on the uh, amended motion ended up in a 7-7 tie with Bob Walden 
not being present at the meeting. Mayor Baird was forced to cast the tie-breaking vote in favor of renting the space. The commission agreed unanimously on several other motions, including one by Sue Nance to release the remaining funds held for volunteer fire departments without stipulations requiring matching grants if those funds are used for capital projects. While all seven fire departments will be affected by the vote, Nance pointed out that her intent was to allow Ridgewood Volunteer Fire Department to have access to the money to help pay for a new roof on the station. The Commission also approved the recommendation from the Insurance Committee to accept the bids for the county's casualty and workers' comp coverage despite increases in both the bids from the local government insurance pool for the county general fund and Tennessee Risk Management for the Board of Education. Were these the lowest bids? Hatmaker asked insurance agent David Rutherford. They were the only bids we solicited. Bids from other carriers, but none were interested. Rutherford replied, there was no discussion at all about tax increases. They're putting that unpleasant topic until the first Budget and Finance Committee meeting scheduled for July the 9th. On that depressing note, the commissioners voted unanimously to approve the bids and recess their meeting until June 28th when they will reconvene to make any adjustments necessary to balance the current budget before the fiscal year ends. There's a little good news for all of us on gas prices. Looking back at our records, gas was dropping only pennies a day a gallon back in May. It came down from 317 to 311 in May. Then just from the past Sunday night, it was lowered from 309 to 306 a gallon. And tonight is community prayer meeting at the old West La Follette School. The meeting will be starting at 7 o'clock and everybody is welcome to attend. And that's a look at our news for this Tuesday. We'll be back with a press release from the Sheriff's Department after this. And taking a look at the press release from the Campbell County Sheriff's Department, there are 14 names on our press release for today. Brandon R. Carroll, age 24, of Demery Road, La Follette, for aggravated burglary and theft of property between $1,000 and $9,999. 44-year-old Michael James Dilbeck of East Central Avenue, La Follette, for theft of property under $500. Jason Michael Drummonds, 35, of Jones Trailer Lane, La Follette, for violation of probation and on a hold for another agency. 24-year-old Tamara Jean Edwards of Batley Road in Clinton for failure to appear and on a capious bench warrant. 54-year-old Billy R. Flannery of Bell, Kentucky for domestic assault and theft of property between $500 and $999, aggravated burglary and stalking. Justin Allen McCulley 23 of Fountain Lane, La Follette, for DUI. Linda K. McNeil, 35 of Gaylor Road, La Follette, for fraudulent use of a credit card, theft of property under $500, and identity theft. 18-year-old Galley Ryan Mills of Bill Brown Lane, La Follette, for aggravated assault by domestic violence. Daniel Joseph Ordorf, 29 of Powell for driving while revoked and violation of the seatbelt law. Jamie Pedrin, 34, of Taswell for failure to appear and on a capious bench warrant. 54-year-old Stanley Perkins of Kentucky Street in Jellicoe on a capious bench warrant. Amy L. Petro, 35, of Demery Road, La Follette for aggravated burglary and theft of property between 1000 
at $9,999. And last today, 22-year-old Amber N. Wallace of Demery Road, La Follette, for aggravated burglary and theft of property between $1,000 and $9,999. And that's a look at the news and the press release for this Tuesday. Join us back here tomorrow. We'll have the midweek edition of the news for you. It's springtime, coming spring, and time for the grill fix up and fill up and all of that. As days become warmer, thoughts turn to outdoor fun, and Wilson Gas is ready to get you ready. Yeah, time to get those campers. I do a lot of uh, fix up on making up hoses. People park them campers, and the squirrels eat the hose off of them, and I make the hoses for them. At Wilson Gas, your total cost includes price and labor. Open Tuesday through Saturday. Wilson Gas. Turn on Rodner Lane and we're back here about 500 yards behind the Papal Bank. Good evening and thank you for tuning in to WLAF News at 530. I'm Lori Leach. Time now to announce birthdays and anniversaries for this Tuesday evening. It's all brought to you by Eastside Pizza and Deli located in the Food Line Shopping Center. We would like to wish a very happy birthday to Adam Smith. Happy birthday, Adam. Nathan Ryan Baird, who turned nine years old today. So happy birthday to you too. Want you to Juanita Dupi, sorry, Shirley Hatmaker, who turned 61 years old today, and Carl Reynolds, who turned 68 years old today. So happy birthday to you guys. Now, all the people that I just mentioned are now qualified to win a dinner from two from Eastside Pizza in Delhi. Now, we usually mention anniversaries too, but no one's celebrating a wedding anniversary today. Let us know who's celebrating a birthday or anniversary in your world. Just call us at 562-1450. That's it for birthdays and anniversaries. Thanks for joining us this evening. We invite you to stay tuned. Your news continues after this. If you're like me, you're the planner. You plan the family get-togethers. You plan for the kids' college. Your retirement. The list goes on. Well, recently, my friends are talking about another type of planning. Funeral planning. I don't know about you, but I don't even know how much a funeral costs. But I know how to find out. Cross Smith Funeral Home at 562-7441. They offer free funeral estimates as a community service. Cross Smith Funeral Home of Lafollette, serving this area for over 70 years. La Follette Monument Company is one of Campbell County's oldest and most trusted businesses. And now, after more than 60 years of operation by founder Owen Hatmaker and family, La Follette Monument is under new ownership and management. Chris and Mary Wynn Arnold are the new owners. Sarah Faulkner is the new manager. Hi, I'm Sarah Faulkner with La Follette Monument Company. Please come see us today for all your memorial needs. La Follette Monument continues offering sales and installation of granite memorials and cemetery markers and granite marker restoration and cleaning services. All you need to do is call or stop by and the folks at LMC will help you select the memorial that best suits your needs. La Follette Monument on the four lane near the high school. Telephone 423-562-1880.